This is Twit. Since we do have a developer celebrity on the show with us, um, we're totally talking you up here, Luke. <laughs> it's only because we love your apps. Um, so we thought we'd uh, spend a few minutes kind of chatting with you a bit about your experience, your history. You've obviously produced a number of, well, I mean, and I mean, obviously there's tons of Android apps in the Play Store, but there are certain developers that when they release a new app, are guaranteed to get attention, guaranteed to get those valuable eyeballs because their their pat you know their stable of apps is that that good. You know you've you've always had an, a really great attention to detail when it comes to uh, the design of the apps in particular. You, you guys spend uh, I have to imagine a good amount of time and a good amount of attention on how you design your apps. Talk about talk a little bit about your earliest break in developing when you got started i know that you are a brother team right <laughs> two brothers uh how yeah. does how does that work out how's that play out so uh, first off i want to say my brother jake he's actually he's working out at google now he's not working for clinker apps anymore oh i didn't know um, so he, he's been out there for about a year and a half okay um, he's, he's probably watching here but <laughs> yeah we, wow uh, do, do you feel do you feel you like go. he kind of do, do you feel like he kind of sold out uh, well, <laughs> I won't answer that. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like when the mothership hovers over over the top of you, like you kind of have no choice. You're like, okay, take me. Yep. As He's we've seen, you know, we've seen that we've, we've seen that with Liam, with, yep. uh, with with like so many others have kind of Google grabs them. So at least Luke, I'm glad we got you while we have you. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. While we can. Yeah. Yeah. So how did it all start? Kind of uh, developing and, and starting all of this with your brother. What was that relationship like uh, from a productive standpoint? Yeah. So we started making apps around uh, 2012, I think. So five years ago, we were freshmen in college uh, at the University of Iowa. And we made this little app called Sliding Messaging. And it was kind of uh, just me and Jacob. Um, and we had kind of a unique idea. I mean, it was a text messaging app, but you could swipe between your different conversations. So uh, just just one really standout, unique feature. But um, we released a kind of a time, a great time in Android where people didn't care that much about design. And here we come in, you know, we've got this app that's not only functional, but it is uh, it looks good, too. And it's custom. And uh, we got a lot of attention right off the bat from that. Um, I think we started out just posting it on XDA. Um, back in those days and then um, moved on to the Play Store and uh, we actually, uh, some little tiny YouTube channel named, or YouTuber named MKBHD actually uh, featured sliding messaging in one of his what's on my phone uh, messages back in 2013, or videos back in 2013. And that's kind of where it, uh, where it started to kick off and where we got some good publicity and uh, sliding messaging did great. Um, it was a lot of learning. We'd never done anything like that before. I mean, we were fresh out of fresh out of high school and we'd only had, you know, one one programming class in high school. So we pretty much taught ourselves everything we needed to know to make that app. And um, it was really the base of what we have today with Talon and uh, Pulse and Evolve and um, Source as well. So, yeah, that's kind of where we got started. We, listening to you kind of talk about, you know, right there at the end, what you were saying as far as like it just, you know, fresh out of, out of high school and you just decided to put this app together, focus on design. I mean, there are a lot of people who have never designed or developed an app before that get into it and think, wow, let's see where I can take this. And it doesn't go very far or it's not as polished or whatever the case may be. Why did that work so well for you? Like how, like, how were you able to focus so much on design? Because like you say, there wasn't a whole lot of great design happening back in 2012. I wouldn't say that it wasn't important to people. We just weren't seeing very <laughs> much of it. And thankfully now yeah. is a very different story. We see a lot of great design, but how were you able to tackle that where other others uh, weren't able to be so effective in it? You know, uh, I don't know. I think we were really fortunate to get our stuff picked up on. First of all, obviously um, a lot of people don't get that. Um, but when we started doing this, uh, Google was just starting to put out these hollow design guidelines. And this was kind of the first of its kind for Android. I mean, no one had ever done this before. No one had ever really thought about design like we were just saying. So we did have a little bit of guidance from from Google and the new uh, the new tools they were putting out and stuff. Um, but really, we just kind of we just wanted to dive in and see what we could make. We didn't have design experience. We didn't have. Uh, programming experience again, like I said, um, it just kind of all came together and 
adding the customization aspects to it, um, again, which was something that not that many people were doing, that was a really big plus for us in terms of the design and um, just what our users were liking out of it. So. I'm I'm really curious uh, in terms of as you started doing your developing and you know kind of you know the the kind of order of apps you put out and it seems as if you kind of have a at least from you know what by by the apps that I've used of yours as well as the ones that are promoted on your site um, at clinkerapps.com um, it seems as if you 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 have you have a bit of a uh, of a lean towards messaging, you know, with Pulse and Evolve, and then Talon, you know, and Source with a little bit in terms of content. How do you when you sit down? Are you developing for yourself first and saying these are the apps I want to see, or you know what what is when you decide you want to tackle something? What is that decision like? Yeah, I am. I'm only ever going to make an app that I'm going to use every day. I mean. Uh, the stuff I the stuff I make it's stuff that I'm passionate about. It's stuff that I want to do, and I think that's really that's really important when you're trying to decide on an app because obviously, I mean, these things you sink a lot of time into them, and if you're not if you don't like what you're making, if you don't use what you're making, um, then you're not going to want to spend that time. You're not going to want to put the time into it. So, yeah, uh, when it started out with Talon and Evolve and sliding messaging, it was kind of like we saw these stock apps that you know come with your phone. They they were good, uh, they were decent. But we thought, hey, we can do this better. We know we can make this better. We can make it more customizable, and um, we want those so that we can use them. Yeah. So I, I think that should be a major a major driver for uh, anything you make. Absolutely. So so when when you're using other apps, do you get kind of get you see the decisions other people make, and you go, ah, I would have done that differently. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are there are plenty of apps, and I gotta make a plug for myself here. I do a lot of consulting as well as um, as well as my own apps here, and um, there's many apps that I would download and say, man, I gotta reach out to them and uh, tell them they need to hire me and fix this stuff. <laughs> but, uh, so yes, I do see that, and that's been, I mean, um, improving on something that comes with your phone. That's that's kind of what we've built built Clinker apps on. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can you can have a great you know a developer can have a great idea for an app, but not think about all the usability aspects of it necessarily. Seeing it through that other lens, like I imagine as from a consulting perspective, to a certain degree, you're consulting on taste, right? Like you're consulting on your ability as a developer to look at an app and go, this is what would be useful to me as a user and to other users, I'm sure, you know, they would be looking for the same thing. Not all developers think in those terms, I would imagine. I'm not a developer. I don't, you know. <laughs> no, so, you're definitely right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I can understand does. why that would be very, very helpful. Yeah. Yep. It's a, it's a unique, it takes a unique person to, you know, to not only make this stuff, but to market it and to provide the support behind it and, um, to make the designs and just just the whole package, and um, I'm very fortunate that I've been able to learn about all that stuff. And it's give, the mm -hmm. making my own stuff has given me a lot of uh, insight into how all that works. And um, I've never been great at all of the all of the pieces of it, um, but slowly as we've as we've continued, I've learned, and I think it's been pretty successful over over the years so yeah absolutely what uh i mean so over the years you've been doing this since 2012 android has changed a lot in five <laughs> almost six years um and and for the better I, I would say the android now is night and day compared to what it was five or six years ago so the limitations you had to work in then versus the just the the expansive capabilities that you have by comparison now what would you say is the biggest challenge that you've faced in the you know, in the last over, well, just over your time developing, like the biggest hurdle that you've had to overcome, um, either technically or just in general, you know, that maybe it, maybe it's dealing with, you know, dealing with the demands of millions of people in the play store. That could be a big challenge. What's, <laughs> what's one of the most kind of complicated parts of that over the years? Uh, yeah. The, the hardest part for me as we've continued to grow is definitely the support aspect of the apps. I mean, um, I've always had kind of a philosophy, whether it's always worked out for me or not. I mean, um, I've, I've had the philosophy that if someone sends me an email, if someone spends their time reaching out, I want to spend my time and get back to them. So um, I, I do spend a lot of time every day, um, a lot of time every week trying to 
you know, respond to users' requests. And if someone sends me an email, that's they're probably going to hear a response. And mm-hmm. I think it's it's really easy to get overwhelmed by that as well. Um, so that balancing time you spend on that versus time you actually spend making the apps, yeah. um, that it's really it's difficult. I mean, I'm getting some days 200 emails um, or more even. Um, and wow. just balancing that time and learning learning how to balance that time as we've continued to grow, uh, it's been a challenge and I'm still not great at it. I'm still not great at support, but uh, definitely working on it and uh, constantly improving. And I think it's a good goal to be able to respond to everyone. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's that's the cha- that's the challenge of being a small business, you know. Yeah. Like, and that's the challenge yeah. of of technically being a startup. I mean, and being you know kind of a oh, yeah. entrepreneur in that regard. So you'll get there. Um, yep. I, I I would love to look uh, to you to give us a little glimpse under the hood about the tools you use and about the stuff that you actually use for development. Um, because I think that, you know, just, you know, it, give a little insight, you know, or, you know, uh, are you utilizing a lot of the recent, you know, kind of, uh, you know, studio apps and things like that, that have come out from Google or what do you, what do you use to create your work? Were you cheering super loud when you heard the word Kotlin at Google? Yeah, I was just going to say that. That was, that. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the, fo- that was the follow up if it didn't come up, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was my, I'll I was what... angling into Kotlin. <laughs> Luke was standing up. <laughs> Cheer and fists in the air. I, you know, I wish I would have been at uh, Google I/O when that went off. By my wife and I, we actually just had a little baby girl okay, uh, during Google I/O, so I wasn't able to be there. Um, but yes, Kotlin. Oh my gosh, I started using that. Just, just dabbling a little bit here and there. It wasn't in any of my production apps um, when, uh, but when it was released, I started integrating it for myself, all of my clients. I started using it across the board. Oh, it's been fantastic. It's just been such a breath of fresh air. And it's so it's just better and easier to use, easier to understand, easier to work with. So Kotlin has been the major, major shift um, in Android development. And it's a fantastic one. Um, but in, in terms of my other tools that I use, um, Android Studio, obviously, all the time. Um, all of the apps I make, they're completely native apps. So um, I, I don't use any any type of cross-platform frameworks for um, like iOS development or anything like that. So I'm I'm in Android Studio constantly. Um, I have a MacBook Pro that I use for for development, uh, one of the 2016 models, and uh, yeah, usually I've I just stick it on stick it on my desk, and I got a nice giant ultra wide screen, which <laughs> I would recommend anyone if you're a developer or or not. I I love it so. Yeah, I need, I need to upgrade my screen for that. Why is that particularly <laughs> useful for developers? Just out of curiosity. So uh, one thing you got to know about developers, uh, if if you're making an app or doing software in general, someone else has solved the same problem that you're trying to solve, and. Um, uh, searching for help online is a huge part of anything you do. You know, you don't you don't want to reinvent the wheel. So having a browser window open alongside Android Studio is uh, helpful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. So, and, and just real quickly, do you do any visualization before? Like, like, do you just write direct to code and design the coded wor- the work, or are you doing any kind of mockups or anything before you dive in? Like, what I'm curious what that iteration looks like. Yeah, so um, before I used to just kind of dive in, and while it worked, it worked really well. It worked really well in Talon and um, Evolve and all of our stuff before that. Um, but with Pulse, you know, we started kind of. Uh, Jacob helped me start making Pulse before he left for Google, and we kind of thought about, um, you know, designing up front rather than just building it as we go. You know, having having a vision for this app uh, in front of time or ahead of time and. Um, kind of following through with that vision rather than just creating it as we go. So yeah, I use um, I use Sketch, which is probably the it's the standard for um, oh yeah Mac yep. users, I guess. Um, so we use Sketch to kind of design all of our all of our UI up front, and it's it's worked out great. I mean, they have awesome tools. It's it's just a really really cool tool. Um, so yeah, I think that that has been. Um, for Pulse, that has been fantastic to have everything just set up and know know the vision that we're trying to create before we actually get there. I think that was really, really helpful and a great, great idea for us. Right on. Cool. Uh, and uh, I, I, know, I know we need to get, get moving on, but uh, JJ in chat 
threw out a, a question, which actually I've wondered about lately for people who are actively developing and very used to material design. Material design, of course, as a spec has been around long enough to get really comfortable with it and for it to kind of evolve into, you know, even further into its own language. Do you feel like it needs, like, are we at a point where material design is starting to feel a little tired? Are you happy with it? How do you feel about that in the design of your apps? So material design is awesome, but um, if someone were to ask me about it, it, it really is, and they call it this right up front, they call it guidelines. They don't say that, you know, this is something that you need to follow to the T. Yeah. And I think that's really, that's really important when you're designing your apps, because if you just put out a standard material design app, you know, um, it, it might get lost in the crowd. Android obviously has so many apps out there and so many material design apps are available now. Um, you need to do something on top of material design, whether that's from animations, whether that's from just little UI tricks or something like that. Um, something on top of material design is fantastic. I think that um, the material design guidelines are a great base uh, to build off of, but I would say something more. You need something more. Yeah, it's a good starting so, point. I think that's kind of, yeah. that's what that's I fair. always wondered from the very beginning is I love the unifying aspect of it. But if everybody was strict to the guidelines, everything would look the same. Thankfully, there's there's well, been a lot of variation. Yeah. Even Google has done that with their own apps. Yep. There just wouldn't be any innovation if everyone yeah. stuck exactly to the guidelines. So. Yeah. Awesome. So clinkerapps.com uh, for the apps that you produce. And real quick, before we move on, you say you do consulting. Uh, how would someone find you in that regard if they wanted that? Yeah. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can email me at luke at clinkerapps.com. Um, I got to say, I'm pretty busy right now, but I am always <laughs> open to discussing new things. So We won't send that many people to you. Uh, now, you, you might get some emails. But there you go. Hey, it, it, yeah. you can always plan for the future as well. Plan your time for the future. Hey, definitely. Right.